When you're sad and depressed, shoot your gun. When you're sad and depressed, shoot your face with the gun. When you're sad and you're depressed and there's nothing going on. You guys, I woke up in such a depressed... I'm not really suicidal, by the way. That Thanks. was just a g- g- game uh, song I just... Also, please don't shoot your face with a gun. Yeah, yeah because b- knowing my luck, I'll still live, and then I'm that guy. Just like... <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, I'm that weird guy at the party. You know what I mean? Like with the, with the Diet Coke in the corner of the fucking party, right? Have you explain why uh, half my face isn't there. Yeah. But anyway, enjoy, and welcome to... That's what Brody used to say. And welcome to another episode of Tiger Belly. I've been... um. Wait, peace that, to you. Wait, hang on. That was our 2021 opening. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Can I know. we remix it? No, no, we can remix it. Because uh, can we just can can we just be in a place where um we're honest and that we're being? I don't want to pretend to be anything that I'm not. Okay, and I'm I'm going to tell you that I have a deep set a, a deep depression has set in. Mm. I woke up today. I'm like, should I shoot heroin today? No, and luckily. Some magical things happened. All right? I got these. Listen. What is it? Front Frontier. It's on Itsuka Tigers. I ordered these tigers online. Like, and I forgot I ordered them. And I got them today. And it made me happy. And then, you know how your frenemy, your frenemy, you know how a frenemy <laughs> gives you a gift? Wait, right. what, what would you, um, guess, what would you, um, how would you define a frenemy? I know many people define it different ways. Yeah. My, a frenemy for me is somebody that, uh, for me, I want, I don't want to like, I don't want to be friends with. Why wouldn't you want to be friends with? Just everything about them ideologically, ethically, you know what I mean? It's just, you're opposed to Their all of it. Their whole being? Their whole being and essence, you know what I mean? <laughs> On on paper <laughs> and on you know on paper is like if I wrote read it yeah like in a magazine mm. somebody's characteristics mm-hmm. I would be like nah right <laughs> but for some reason because of um, happenstance and li- life you know what I mean you you meet them in a certain you know a venue or light and you become friends with them but you don't know why but you love them. But you don't want to, and but I do. I, I love them. Do you have loyalty towards a friend of me? Oh yeah, I die for him. Oh, okay, so <laughs> I love that sentence. I, I would die for him. I would die it's for my more friend. more of a friend, friend than a me. No or, enemy still. War brothers. Oh, that that that's a good one. That's a very good one. So you and I are on the same team, or yeah, or no? I I look at it this way. It's like enemy mine. Do you ever see that movie? What, what is that? No. Mean? It was a movie, it was about, um, I forgot who it was, but it was um, a white dude and an alien trapped on an island, on a, on a planet, <laughs> deserted planet. It's a real movie. It's a real movie. I better not be the alien in this Yeah, movie. you're the alien, <laughs> right? And, and they're, I guess, you know, humans and this alien race, I don't forget the premise, I'm sure that's what it is, and they were at war, and they, these two um, get just trapped on an island, a deserted island, and they have to become friends. To survive. Do they become friends? Yeah, these are start sucking each other's dicks. It's fucking weird. Not really, but you know okay. what I mean? <laughs> but really um weird. so that that's, no, that's what it is. So I think weird. it's is there a movie called Enemy Mine? Uh Enemy It would bring me so much joy if you just made that up. Yes. 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 And is, is there is Lou Gossip Jr. in it? He is He's the alien, right? Yes. Yeah, they made the black guy the alien. <laughs> which is wrong. Yes. Well then And then who's the white guy? Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid. <laughs> Dennis Quaid looks so young. Yeah, he's so young. So Dennis Quaid and Luke Gossip Jr. are on an island. An island. Why do you keep saying island? It's, planet. It's a planet. It's yeah, a planet. My planet. bad, yeah. right? So that's me and George. So George got me these shoes. These, you know, I've been, you know, sometimes he wears pretty cool shoes. And I always go, um, where'd you get those shoes? And he goes, uh, he tells me, and then I'm just too lazy to, or I forget. And so he bought me these and they're pretty nice. So thank you so much. And you know it's it's you know normally uh, it would be very difficult for me to accept them, but um, I will accept them because I'm changing my attitude toward the people around me, and that's what growth is all about. Fibrum bottoms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are fibrum bottoms. But thank you so much because it was a surprise. I never thought that you would ever do this, but I feel like you you did this. <laughs> you know what I mean? For you, you're expecting something in return. Is it? Be honest with me. No. Because what you said when you gave it to me, he goes, you, then I go, 
well, that's weird. You got me this. What do you want? He goes, well, I did write a script. I have a movie script. <laughs> Is that what it is? So you wrote a movie script? No, I've always got a movie script. He's, I, I said it as a joke, and then you, then you asked me, like, do you? I, yeah, of course I do. Let me say something. <laughs> yeah. George is a, an amazing writer. I know he's a great. He's, like, a, he's a legitimate amazing writer. I've read so much, so many of his stuff, and I'm like, to okay. me, my, in terms of writers, it goes Aaron Sorkin, <laughs> yeah. and then George Kimmel. Where's always? On, what about Andres? What Andres? Andres is third for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I um, but. one of the days that you helped him out with um, uh, Theo and um, um, Jay, um, he came back upstairs. And he was like, babe, you can never, ever repeat this to anyone, Kay. <laughs> never, never. Well, then don't say this. Comments. Don't talk. <laughs> if I said no. that, don't say it. No, she no, has it's to. It's benign. It's not going to ruin it's, anybody. It's, it might ruin me. No, it won't ruin it, ruin it may, but it won't. Oh, well, yeah. I think it's... Okay, go ahead. Because <laughs> you can never tell anybody this. I was like, okay, fine. What is it? And I was at the edge of my seat. He was like, I really, really, really love George. I never said that. <laughs> I, I never said that. I believe it. I never. Why would I say that? Because you're you're smiling angry. Like, you're doing angry smile. No, I'm not angry smile. This you're, is how I'm. I'm really angry. Why are you smirking a little bit? Because I'm depressed. And you're you, happy. He said he's never not there for me. Wow. Yeah. yeah okay. Why are you frustrated? It's great. It's not great. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. It's like what? having. It's like having rape juice on me. Oh. Yeah, I don't well, like rape juice. I, I don't back. like we rape juice. We don't even know what that is. I, don't know. I know, but <laughs> We're imagine never near it. In your mind, imagine what rape juice is. I don't try to. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know the residual effects of rape. Yeah. So uh. enemy mind came out in 1985. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, I might have said that, right? <laughs> but I, I, my, I might have said that. But the things that you're reading from me, George. Yeah. Where you you think because there are times where I know you think, oh, is he in a bad mood? Or is does he not like me? Do you ever think that? Do I think? Are you in a bad mood or, a lot of the time? I know, <laughs> I, I know, but but I know, but do you ever think? <laughs> That's literally but do you ever how think, we communicate. But do you ever think? Do you ever think that I don't like you? Not genuinely, no. Damn it! It's not coming through. The hatred. Yeah. I want to. I want to ask you guys this: Who do you think is in a bad mood more often, Bobby or me? Hmm. Mm, I would. It's tough. Thank you. It's tough. Oh, God I'll, bless you. I have to be honest, though. Yeah. I like today. You're in a good mood, even though you're depressed. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. I think mood and depression is different. But we base how to maneuver in this room based more on if you're in a good mood or not. <laughs> be I'll tell you why. Is he rude when he's in a bad mood? Listen. Am it, I rude when I'm in a bad? Mood? Listen. L listen no, to you, this. Okay. You close up. If I'm, I close off, but I'm not rude. Off. Okay. If I'm right, if I'm working in the White House, right? Let's say I'm press secretary. <laughs> yeah. All right. Right. Would I, would I, be more affected by President Trump being in a bad mood or Mike Pence? Are you trying to quit the you Lila or Trump and Pence? Yeah, I'm we're confused. Trump and Pence. Uh -huh. Who's who though? I thought I was Trump. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she, I, get it, I don't want to electrocute you, Gabe. Yes, you do. Yeah, You're yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to no, do. I don't want to. I get it. I think. You get, do, you, do you understand what I'm Bobby saying? Bobby is more up and down, and Kalila is a lot slower. Like, she's like. So the, yeah. the, the difference between our moods, though, and even Jules will tell you that no matter if I'm having the worst day possible, if it has nothing to do with you, mm -hmm. I will not project that onto you. I really try to be conscious about not, I'm a projector. not showing, not <laughs> yes. like you don't deserve that. Like, I'm in a, that's my own shit. So I'm not going to try to be an asshole. To right me. here, projector. Him, on the other hand, he wants you to everyone to feel what he's feeling. I'll feel it, absorb it. But thank God you guys aren't codependent. So you don't take it personally. And All right. All right, that's who I am. I'm so sorry. That's who I am. You know, I'll be honest with you, you know. If he loses his car keys, say for instance. Oh, God. <laughs> Does this happen? <laughs> Shut up. Wow. I don't speaking of which, speaking of which, what did I get you for Christmas <laughs> to solve this big issue in the house? Oh, losing your me, car keys. She gave me a, um, a car key. Um, What's that called? It's, it's a like tile. A, tile. A tile. And, one, and a credit card tile. And a credit card tile What's so he that? doesn't lose his wallet and his car key. So this is a, one of the, the biggest fights we have in the house is when he loses either of those things. Yeah. And then in therapy, I've learned that, no, you just let him find it on but his you own. Know what I, you know, but you know what I lost? The tiles. The tiles. <laughs> <laughs> so I need a tile. I need tiles. For the tiles. I need tiles for the tiles. 
I literally don't know where they are. I know. I don't know either. Yeah, I don't know where they are. But um, I was going to ask you today. <laughs> thank you for getting me those. We'll never see them again. We'll never. <laughs> Can you keep it yeah. from an app or no? Well, he yeah. never even set up the app. So you're supposed <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, the yeah. tiles are unregistered. Yeah, we need to get the tiles for the tiles. tiles yeah. For the tiles. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah, you're right. It's weird. Um, I should have immediately, op- when I opened up that package, and said, oh my God, I got tiles. I should do it right now. You didn't. I, then I told you, babe, put it in now. Put it in now. You did. You kept saying that. And how many times have you lost it, your key since? Five or six times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wallet, too. Yeah, my wallet. And if you don't help him find it, he will make sure he paces around you with heavy footsteps. Uh, and breathing it's unlike, like this. It's, un- <laughs> it's unlikable. It's, unli- it's unlikable behavior. Yeah. It's a very unlikable behavior. When I did that, it's not came out. I know. It's very unlikable. We'll edit that out. And I apologize. Um, that's who I am. But you know what? I, I'm not. I, you, don't, you don't think that I've been better about it? About what the car, the car keys? I think no. I've been a, bit, a little better about it. I don't. The car keys? No. There are a lot of things you are better about. Tell them. Tell them what to balance it out. To balance yeah. it out to make me feel a little better. Um. <laughs> what am I better about? Mm, I think you're better about um being told what you know to help around the house without you having a meltdown about it. Like when Jules and I ask you now, like, hey, do you think you can help us? Or do you think you can throw that in the trash? Like some, you have a tendency to whatever you eat, let's say if it's like takeout, you just leave it scattered everywhere. That's and right. then we always have to clean up after you. But now her and I have... Also, I've been doing it on my own. Like this, I don't, you didn't realize it and I wasn't going to even mention it. Yeah. But today, because there was all these cans on these things... Um, yeah, and they're gone. Yeah, I threw them out. Yeah. Right, mm. I emptied a lot of the trash because it was piling over. Mm-hmm. Right, there's just certain things that where I just go, and I'm not gonna. I wasn't gonna say. I swear to God, I wasn't gonna ever say anything. But there are things that I do <laughs> that I don't ever brag about or say. I don't think you're supposed. I know you. I know you're not. That's why I don't do it. I throw away the cans <laughs> every I time. Don't, I don't do it. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> That's why I don't do it. True, true. All right, all right. So I apologize, but um, uh, but so you know, I've been doing things on my, and I don't think that men get credit for that. You know what I, mean? I, I think didn't men know get, you needed a fucking gold medal to to throw trash. If you were in the trash a person can. that didn't do it, no, babe, you don't get rewarded no, 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 for, say, for if you're a person, <laughs> right? Let, let, I'm trying to defend it. Let me give me give me an opportunity. All right, if you're a guy, right, that never did something. Right, because it just never, um, it's just not a part of your nature to do it. Okay. Right, it did, never dawns on you to do it. Right, because you know, um, been a spoiled brat your whole life. Like that. Okay. Let's no. Well, first of all, yes. <laughs> and first of all, second. Oh, but oh, can I just defend this? Okay. Here's my other angle. Okay. So you're right. So when I was growing up, okay, my mother did everything for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like, um, if I, but she there was one thing that she never did. Was wipe the wall, so I had a, a, I obviously had a bedroom, and I had a um, in the back uh, the back wall where the bed was against, it was full of like, the, the it looked like yellow tears but dried. Yeah, your cum wall. Yeah, my cum wall, <laughs> right? And for some reason, and I don't know if she ever knew what it was. Yeah, she does. She knows better. That woman's lived through wars. She knows what a cum wall. Looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she never cleaned it. But that was the one thing she would never clean. And this is years of it. So it just became like this, just like, you know, it was an art exhibition. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, um, but she used to clean everything up. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, why, you know what I mean? Throwing things away. That's how this conversation started. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, right? you asked from, for another angle. I don't know. <laughs> we, we went from, you know what I mean? I've been throwing things away. I did it. <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> to this gigantic, you know what I mean? I think it all stems from that though. I think it's the the idea that you are responsible for more than just yourself. The, con- the 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 idea that there is there are people around you that need to be considered besides yourself. Yeah. Well, I've never been a I've you know before you, right? I the last roommate I had was um back in the dumpster days when I lived with all those guys, right? Mm-hmm. So then I always lived by myself uh, and I always had house cleaners okay mm. and so i've never lived with anybody to be you know to be considered i mean i lived with one girl sarah what did right? she think but she's just like i am she's free in that way you know what i mean <laughs> you know what i mean she's like kind of she disappears 
Oh, okay. Yeah. She's one of those girls that's like, all right, I'm going to just go to my friend's house and then you won't see her for two weeks. What about like, what did she and think was about like, your Bye. cleanliness yeah. and stuff? She was like that too. She's very like, there's paint all over the place because she painted, mm -hmm. right? And just tubes of paint on the ground. And what like, about with poo and stuff? What did she think of like poo smears? Where poo? Where are you mean in the toilet? Like there's uh, no poo smear. I'm not. The I don't live in an ask asylum. Ask George how many times he's had to scrub the bathroom <laughs> over here. I know, but it's in the toilet smears. though, right? Big fair yeah. game. Fair game. Is that the fair game? Is in the toilet? Then yeah. why do you yeah, complain yeah. when I fart into a toilet? I don't. It, I think it's cute. My point is. Wait, he does think. That, it's cute? Yeah, yeah. It's. Yeah, he's like, what was that? I'm like, <laughs> in a fart into the toilet. <laughs> so I've never lived in a situation, right, where you know I lived with you know regular, you know what I mean, cleanly people. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, who um, like things a certain way, right? And it's like, and I'm just a messy kind of a guy. I mean, you know that about me, and so I'm trying to improve myself but if this is not i know i'm almost 50 and this is it sounds ridiculous that i'm learning these things <laughs> but i'm just one of those i'm just a dirty chaotic messy guy right and i'm trying to like i should throw this out now or you know what i mean i never even knew what the blue and the green and the black containers meant you know what i mean i used to put the fucking cans in the you know, I mean, green one you know what i mean you're being green yeah yeah and then i used to put like you know a hamburger in the blue one, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know where, I've learned all that here, you know? So it's just, you know. Yeah. You different know. different stroke for different folks. You know how they say? Do you know, uh, you have saying you were depressed today? I I'm a little bit more depressed now because of this conversation. It's okay. I think the way to solve that yeah. is to go deep into your past. And while George and I were cleaning up the old podcast room, we yeah. found, none of us have read this, a little book that says Mr. Bobby Lee, Written in 94, 95, 96, 97. Oh, yeah, that's my, that's my journal. So for I'm going to hand this call out. There's bookmark pages that we did not bookmark, but I believe those are. I think I've read those before. Have you? You read some of it, yeah. On this podcast. Yeah, but I, don't, I think we just do some therapy. I think we just did one page or two about a girl. But. Oh. Uh, it's. Babe, you know, I'm going to say this for someone who's very chaotic and free and messy and dirty. Very orderly. You <laughs> I've never been able write to keep a journal that. Very much. neatly. I write in diagonals. Like I can't follow the. Uh, this is gonna be embarrassing. I don't. I don't know. I mean, wait, wait, wait. we'll cut it out if you don't want okay, it. Okay, okay. Hey guys, we're gonna take a really quick break to share one of our favorite sponsors with you. Calm, calm, calm. You know, this is my favorite word in the whole world, and it's one of my favorite apps. Did you know that? Oh wow, I didn't know. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something. You know, I used to take um, like five Unisoms or Tylenol PMs to All go to bad. sleep. But get this, now all I use is no chemicals. I use Calm, the app. Mm. It is one of the most powerful ways to improve your overall health and happiness is to get a good night's sleep. Did you know that? No. But if your daily routine has changed, it can be harder to fall and stay asleep. Mm. 2020 okay. has been a lot. Yeah. And we could all benefit from less stress and more sleep in our lives. It's so important to take care of ourselves and invest in our well-being during times of anxiety. It really does help. And some of their stories, you know what I mean, are amazing. Um, Calm, by the way, is the app designed to help yeah. you ease stress and get the best sleep of your life. But they have sleep stories, right, narrated by, like, A-list people. Yeah. Okay? Kelly Rowland. Love her. And the Laura Dern. The also, my From favorite. Star Wars. They also have just <laughs> like the ones that I do are the 10 minute um, meditations, yeah. but set to the background of your choosing. So I like to do it to the sound of rain. Yeah. Oh, oh I like that. If you go to calm.com slash belly, you'll get a limited time offer, 40% off a calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programming. Tell us more about it, Gil. For listeners of the show, Calm is offering a special limited time promotion of 40% off. A Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash belly. That's 40% of 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library and new content is added every week. Once again, get started today at calm.com slash belly. That's calm C A L M dot com slash belly. Ship <laughs> station. <laughs> ShipStation is a um, service that we would be dead without it. Yeah. Because we sell merchandise on this program, mm -hmm. and ShipStation is our shipping station. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you it is. If you sell stuff online, you know how busy 2020 was, right? Yeah. 
Everyone has their, and their dog was shipping online, even our dogs. Did you know that? Shopping online. That's two, shopping online. Your dogs? No, they were shipping. Shopping. Uh, well, get ready for 2021. <laughs> it's going to be even bigger. It's why online sellers like you need ShipStation. No matter how much you sell, ShipStation makes it super easy to manage and ship all your orders from all your sales channels faster, cheaper, and more efficiently. No matter what what or where you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation brings all of your orders into one simple interface, making it really easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. They use all the major carriers, Gilbert. Oh. Like USPS. Okay. FedEx. Love it. And UPS. Yum. Yep. ShipStation even offers big discounts on shipping rates. Now, any business can access the same discounts usually reserved for large Fortune 500 companies. You'll always know what you're getting when you're getting the best deal, there's, Gilbert. There's a good reason ShipStation is the number one choice for us and for online sellers. Ship more in less time with some of the best rates available anywhere. Tell us more about it, Gil. Get 2020 off right to the get 2021 off to a great start by visiting shipstation.com. Just use our offer code Belly to get a 60 day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress free shipping. Just go to shipstation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Belly. That's shipstation.com. Enter the offer code Belly. Shipstation, make ship happen. Oh, I heard Enjoy the rest of the show. What? Maybe go farther back in the book. Okay, further back. Why did you guys fucking bookmark the that? It, we didn't. We didn't bookmark it came these. Bookmarked. We didn't. It came I bookmarked. Oh, it came bookmarked. I didn't read any of these. That's not my journal to read. Okay. Yeah, you should. At another low. <laughs> April, April 19th, 1995. These stand-up gigs are bringing me down. Mm. I hit a new low tonight. I stripped naked, stuffed shit up my nose, balanced an ashtray on my head, and stuck a microphone up my ass just to get a laugh. What the fuck does paying your dues mean anyway? Who mm. the fuck do I have to pay and why? I hate this. I can't do it anymore. I've really only been doing it since mid-January, and yet I'm sick and tired of it all. I was doing so well about a couple of weeks ago. I did two smoking smoking sets. Two smoking sets at the comedy store, and the last two have been shitty. Fuck, I need more material, and I need to move to be more consistent. Will I ever get good? Who knows? At least I'm trying. Wow, that's actually some good insight. Do you remember that? No. You don't. I don't believe I. I, I never use smoking. You use smoking here. <laughs> and then you Why don't you just read all the pages? Why do you have to skip? So oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So you, there was. That's almost the start of when you started doing more of the crazy stuff. Then. No, I I, I started that way. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This is a love one. Oh, this is gonna break my heart. Why can't you be this sweet again? <laughs> I wish he, he would write about me this way. He cleaned up cans today. I think that's a that's a new love letter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. March 15th, 1996. <laughs> I love Anna. I love her enough to accept the fact that we are just good friends. Oh, oh dude, you're a poet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I love it. Oh, sweetie. We spent the night driving around trying to find juvenile hall for one of the kids that Anna tutors. After, Anna gave me a hug. That hug was intimate and it felt comfortable. I realized at that moment that she isn't like the others. That's more the reason that I'm lucky to be her friend. Dude, that's good. I'm 24, old enough to know that sex, romance, and all the other pressures that my peers throw at me are not that important. I'm set free. Who are you? Wow. <laughs> Why is that so? Do you feel that way now? So I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> I, I I get it. <laughs> why is that? I'm crying a little bit inside. I think I don't believe any like all of these stories that you say you are about being like this dirt bag, this this and that. I know you like in your heart. This is who you are. When you were 24 and you were this sensitive, loving, tender man who would never, who would just look at a girl and be like, okay, I'll take the friendship. Yeah. Damn. Ugh, that shit made me cry. Broke me, babe. Keep breathing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
okay, I guess it's a different tone. What happened? After that I'm set free. <laughs> yeah, after that I'm set free, there's a little tagline underneath. Keep going. There's a tag underneath that <laughs> yeah. says, when she said we are close personal friends, I knew it was over. <laughs> <laughs> March 24th, 1996. I've changed my attitude. I can't live my life by what others think of me. I'm going to concentrate on what I need to do. There you go. Okay. May 9th, 1996. Seven years of sobriety and growing. If I died tomorrow, I will have no regrets. Damn, bro. Wow. February February 2nd, 1997. Wow, a whole year after. You didn't write for a year. Mm -hmm. I am a paid regular at the Hollywood Comedy Store, and I just got back from Vegas opening that's, for Polly Shore. That's crazy. That's in that book. Yeah. Okay, here's your five-year plan. Here. I have a manager, Worthy Patterson, who happens to manage, <laughs> who happens to manage Carlos Mencia. Lots of things have happened in the last couple months, but I need to stay focused. I can hardly care if I do good or bad on stage because I know I'm funny and I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a lot more original. I'm still hooked on Anna. <laughs> the whole year after. Wait, the whole year after. Oh, you're after. I'm still hooked on Anna and it is scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I meet somebody else. Yeah. Even if I'm able to even if I'm able to date Anna, it's still an impossible situation since I'm so focused on my career now as a comic. I'll give this comedy th- comedy thing my best for the next five years. This is my five year plan. Number one, TV show. Number two, movies. Yep. Number three, HBO special. Overall plan: enough money. Number two, a wife. Number three, kids. Ooh, just need you got half of them. Wow. March twenty third, nineteen ninety eight. This is two years after. Oh no, a whole year after. Today I'm auditioning for a movie that has Nicolas Cage in it. <laughs> Who is that? What, what movie what is movie? that? I don't remember. Nicholas. I've been in the main room six times since I've moved to LA. I've done two more TV shows. I just need to focus on my act and stay humble. Finances are low, and I don't think I can maintain this kind of living for much longer. So he's thinking about it. Wow, you got cocky real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Like, now I want to. Uh, well, where, fast forward. Where to my true self comes is this, out. Is this the turn? I want to see the turn. Uh, I want to see the turn two, into the real. Two thousand two is when you turn. Yeah, good, good, good. I want to hear it. Into a Hollywood vampire. <laughs> go, go, go. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Oh man. Uh, this is. This is four years later, um, April 28th, 2002. I make $7,000 a week and I have $40,000 in investments. <laughs> That's all you wrote for that day. <laughs> what happened to the, I'm in love with Anna. Uh, Anna I, is my heart. This is, uh, my, this is my financial portfolio. I, I it gets worse, I think, after that. <laughs> Dude, I think it gets worse after that. What was that. the switch? What the fuck happened to you? That's when it. That's when I. That's when I changed. That's when you became probably incorrigible to other people. I was really bad then. I was really bad then. But um. Let's see if you get better at all. I, oh, I, oh, you, oh! Let me tell you something. What? Four years, five years have passed. Yeah. But you're still hooked on Anna. Really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Let me. Is this 2002 April 28th? Last night, I did my first Tonight Show appearance. Jay Leno talked to me in my dressing room for 20 minutes. I didn't hear a word he said because I'm like, fuck, Jay Leno is talking to me. He's got a huge chin. Currently, I'm on a sketch (laughs) show on Fox called Mad TV, and I hate it. But (laughs) (laughs) But I I make more money than I have ever had. And the pussy potential is out there. (laughs) It's out there. (laughs) The pussy potential. (laughs) I'm oh god I'm seeing a hot model type <laughs> named I'm gonna keep it blank uh-huh. why did and she costs a lot of money let wait what <laughs> let me see did you hire her I might, okay. hired, I might have hired somebody let me see the name let me see the name or maybe she just caught like clothes and stuff like that oh yeah yeah she's crazy wait but she she wanted you to buy a lot of things for her yeah 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 I'm seeing a hot model type and she costs a lot of money <laughs> I have a great agency behind me, Gersh, and my manager oh. is the best, Abby. Oh. I'm pretty fucking happy. Side note, Anna is married and she's pregnant. Oh, you've been following her. Mm-hmm. But I'm truly happy for her. Things happen when they happen and nothing matters but God. 
So shut the fuck up, Bobby, because you're driving yourself crazy. Dude. I feel like I shouldn't be sitting here and that Anna should be here instead. Why? No. You've, I, I feel like I want to see how this love story could have panned out. It never it would have panned It would never Can this turn into panned a out. movie? That was the last thing you wrote? Yep. Wow. You held a candle for Anna for a really long time, and my heart breaks for this this the little boy that that couldn't ever feel, you know, the love in return. Mm. <sighs> you know, um, the honest truth is, if she if she hadn't, it's like it's like I something drove me into pursuing comedy as hard as I did. You know what I mean? And it was two things. I think it, it was, you know, my fear of my future or how I'm going to survive. And also heartbreak. You know? And those are the two things. So I always looked at it as, I mean, obviously I don't even think about her or know what she looks. I don't care, right? But... Uh, but you're friends. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, I do. I mean, if she... If her and her family came up here and wanted to have dinner, I guess we would have dinner. But yeah, we keep like anytime she sends you um, a Christmas card with her family, we put it. Yeah, on the yeah, bridge. yeah, and and I, and I appreciate it. And um, um, but without that heartache, I don't think that I would have. It would have driven me into, you know, comedy. I mean, it was like depression and desperation, and all those things um, motivated me. You know. That's why it's like even now when things are good, you know, I f try to find things to um, put me kind of back in that desperation spot to motivate me and to get me, you know, it's just, I don't know if that's healthy or not, but, um, you know, it's a great motivator for me, you know, fear, you know, and loss, you know, I'm not one of those guys that like when things go bad. You know what I mean? I go, I disappear into the night. When things go really bad, I fight. And I, and I, I'm a scrapper. You know what I mean? I'm a little bitch and I'm complaining. I become a complainer and I'm, I'm messy and, uh, you know, and I, and I know I'm all those things as well. I'm all those things as well. If there's anything that, like, there is, you know, like we, we've been doing this for so long and there is that I, this idea of you of just being this, you know, kind of chaotic human being, kind of just does what he wants. There is one thing that I wish people, or a side of you that I wish people knew more mm. of. Mm. And that is you are by far the most tenderest, the most tender, loving, unabusive person I've ever met. Like I grew up in a in a household where there was always like screaming and name calling, and any time there would be a fight, we'd always go for the jugular. That even for me, mm. like when I'm back to get against the corner, I try to go for like the most cutting angle. Um, with him, even when he, he he's not nasty like that. I'm not nasty towards you because I love you so much. I I would never if something about you and my feelings towards you and my relationship toward with you. Um, makes me not want to, it just, it's not, I don't want to go there because it's like, I love you that much. But you've broken the cycle is what I'm saying. Like you grew up watching. I'm No, I'm like that with other people though. Cutting? Yeah. I, I'm very cutting. I mean, you should listen to the shit that I say in Warzone to strangers. Ah, uh, yeah, but. I say really crazy shit. I hope you do because no, they deserve I say, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my point is, is that, and I, you know, I am still that guy, you know, but um, there are things that I have in my gun with toward Andrew Santino. I do. I have a gun and I have three or four bullets in there that will t completely, that would completely evaporate our friendship and our relationship that was so dark and cutting, right? That's gonna make me the champion of it, you know what I mean? But it'll also destroy. I have that with everyone. Wow. I have things that I can say or do, right? That is gonna to cut to the fucking, you know, root of it. Right? I think we all do, though, sweetie. Yeah, no, I know we do, right? So my point though is, is that, um, but with you specifically, you know what I mean? I don't do that, you know. And I've done that in other relationships where I've said things, right? Like I remember one girlfriend. I go, 
I said something. I knew it was be cu- it would be cutting, and very hurtful. Well, hold on one second. Let me. I just the, looking at your face. Can I guess what you said? What? Can I just guess what you said? What? Did you say something along the lines of, "That's why your dad abandoned you"? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. How did you guess that? I just saw it in his face. Yeah. Because that's to me, that would be the most painful thing you yeah, could I've, say to yeah, somebody. Yeah, I've said things like that, right, toward a girl, and they have to go. Thanks a lot. You know what I mean? And then cry and turn around and run away. And then when they run away, I go, run, run. run. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like I have that, you know? Yeah. But I'm not like that with her. I would never be like that with her because I love her too much. It's, you know, also it's like, um, <laughs> if you also, you're also, fu- you're, you're also going to be, if I'm going to go for her jugular, She'll go for right? Yours. Uh, my jugular is exposed as well, <laughs> right? And I know what she has in her arsenal. And so, you know, I'm just going to play. I'm, I'm also, I'm going to play, you know what I mean? It's a truce for life. Yeah, you it's know, let me tell you yeah, something. She's, she's he, fucking deadly. He can never betray me. She can, Yeah. He she knows never. things about me. She knows things about me, right? <laughs> that no one knows. So she, she has me by the yeah. fucking testicles, right? So, and, and and it's like, you know, I, I allowed that to happen because I love her so much. But she has, you know what I mean? <laughs> she has the information and I, I'm fucked. It's a weird say, a weird way of both of you saying we're both vulnerable towards each other. <laughs> no, we're both basically tethered so tightly to one another. Yeah. Like it, we cannot, it won't be an easy break. It's going to be like, God, he has all my secrets. He has all of my secrets. Does he know the most secrets out of anyone in your life? No. Other than your sister, maybe? No, he doesn't. I those he's dumb. He I know all his <laughs> secrets. He doesn't know all of mine. You better get them. <laughs> yeah. It's just that he is somebody who um like for his thoughts, like I I do like this about him. He always needs a place for his thoughts and ideas. Like certain things I keep very close to my chest. So I don't need a place for them. They can stay inside me. Mm-hmm. I fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up, but you know what? Um, it's fine. I'm f- I'm fine with it. You know, but in terms of like, it's it's so interesting to hear. You know what I mean? You didn't get like in. Do you ever read the the Mio shit in the beginning? I, I, I read that. What is? Me, what, read, read the beginning. I don't want you to take it away from me. Yeah. Oh God! This is so Mio. It's so Mio, right? What? Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is true. Oh my God, he does know how to spell Allen Ginsberg. Oh, it's about Alan, the, the chess. Yeah, remember I yeah. told you about Allen Ginsberg. Uh, yeah. It's real. And I thought we, I thought you said Ellen. Yeah, Ellen. And but you, you did spell it Allen. Because I know the guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, you've already said that many times. <laughs> Guys, this this entry is not dated because it is Great. evergreen. Ooh. Allen Ginsberg said to me. <laughs> What the fuck were you writing a novel? Like, you're writing a novel? <laughs> this is the fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ginsburg said to me, <laughs> Alan, Alan Ginsburg said to me, if I watch too much TV, that I might fry my head. I was hoping for something way more prophetic than that, but okay. If I want, if I watch too much TV, that I might fry my head. I wanted to say that I have nothing else to do with my time. I will not talk about the woman in my life and their effects on me. No more power to the evil. What? Wow, you're the original men that go their own way. Uh Wow. No more. (laughs) I will not talk about the woman in my life and their effects on me, okay? No more power to the evil. Time and time and fucking time again, I go through a fucking phase in my life where I, I mind fuck myself. I don't know. I can't yeah, yeah, People yeah. like me, I get suspicious of their judgment. Yeah, I don't know. And character. Mm-hmm. It goes straight into a bus was bombed in Israel <laughs> the other day. Yeah. And people dead on the street. And I complain about my life, conflict oh. and turmoil globally. And I complain. I don't vote. I rarely help others. And I complain. I fucking like to complain, damn it. Makes me feel good. Mm. God, I should bring this to our couples therapy because you always say, I don't complain. <laughs> Literally. I think that's enough. Like, this is proof. Hold on, one more, okay, one more. Enough. Please, just one more paragraph, right. please. <laughs> work, 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 and more fucking work. This minimum wage drudgery is monotonous and it will kill me. Mother said. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what? <laughs> mother? Yeah, yeah, mother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, Are you mom, Mike mother? Pence? <laughs> Mother, 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 mother said that I don't have mother. any valor. <laughs> Where did you talk like this? Mother said I don't have any valor. This is 1970. Maybe she's right. Oh my God. It's such a great line. I have to take a picture of that. Okay. Sad songs really bring me down, but why? I don't identify with them. The lyrics mm. usually contain material or experiences that are foreign to me. I have never had a lover to lose, and my life has been pretty uneventful. The chords are basic, open chords, which is usually major and key. I'll never know why sad songs bring me down, but they do. I have seen so many attractive people today, male and female. Told you you were fluid. I wonder what yeah. people think of me. What a self What a self-centered thought. I need to face and walk through my fear. I'm so close and yet so far away. I lit up a cigarette in front of a non-smoking person and she started to complain. Don't you know that that secondhand smoke can kill me, you selfish bastard? You know, I don't like when people break out hard drugs like cocaine, crack. It's just a personal thing. So I develop a technique when I find myself in those situations. What I do is what I... Is I leave. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of good advice to yourself. Yeah, babe. Anyway, what a weird Sweet episode. Boy. Wait, I want to let's 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 wow. retract. I really wow. want to do a recap of what everyone's done in the holidays before we wrap up. No, no, podcast. I'm not wrapping up. Yeah, I'm just don't want to talk about this anymore. I think it's, on just, it's 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 like it's so is it weird? emotionally draining for me. Yeah, it's weird. I, I I was scared to you know, and it's also it's like I was a little a lot more like introspective. I think. And and and, yeah. and and I you know just to journal. I you think you I mean? you seem a lot more focused, like not as kind of all over the place. <sighs> yeah, but there was always like this um, notes from the underground. The re reason why I had a journal is because you know I just wanted to like you know, um, because I was so alone all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't really have a lot of friends, and you're and so depressed and just walking around and being very like. You know, I, when you're at that age, you're so very philosophical, I, I guess. You know what I mean? Trying to find the meaning of life or whatnot. And I would just write, you know, in an introspective kind of a way. But I, 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 maybe I should start journaling again. I think that you should. Yeah. I mean, I started journaling during the pandemic. You I'll did? bring that next but, time. But you've been okay. journaling your whole life, though, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I journaled a lot. But again, very similar to his. Super emo. Mm. Like, I would cut myself and then put the blood on my journal. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would listen That's to fucking good. Fiona Apple's rendition of Across the Universe. Love that song. Um, but her rendition is like super depressing. I know, no, that, I know, love, love that version. Yeah, and then I would always just, you know, yeah. We're the same, baby. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Him and I would have gotten along. We would have probably. Wow. What shirt is that? Red Scare. It's a great show. Red Scare, yeah. What's Red Scare? Uh, it's a podcast. podcast. On, on Patreon. Mm. Are they good? Patreon. Very good. Yeah, real good. Fun. Is it um, comedy? No, it's uh, I don't know, political ish, modern issues. Yeah, I would they, they take on they 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 don't never try to be right. They they just try to be interesting. So mm -hmm. is there the comics that do it though, or just political people? Um, mostly political people. Yeah, they're uh they're really in the zeitgeist. Like they can get anybody they want. Almost they've gotten a lot of big people just by being interesting. Red scare. Yeah. Oh, oh you could, I'm gonna listen to it. Um. Okay. So what did you get for Christmas? Oh, Besides boy. your tile. So for Christmas, I got um, some cool things. I got pills. Pills? Yeah, I got... Vitamins or pills? I got atenolol, beta blockers, <laughs> and... Um, right? I'm um, lodipine. I'm lodipine. Yeah, I, 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 like, uh, I got a video game plaque with my name on it, which is really cool. Oh, from my sister. From yeah. your sister. That's why she asked me. I got, yeah. She did ask you? Yeah. I got slippers from your sister. Yeah. I got um, also, um, what else did I get? Oh, yeah, uh, I got eye. Uh, sleeping eye mask. Yeah, but that's, you know, to be honest with you, I think I'm going to go blind. That's why I can't use it. It's what a do you mean? One. So it's like this weighted Juliana eye mask. Juliana got it for her. Juliana got it. And it's really cool. Like they, But then they sit on your eyes, and then I have this fear that the next time I open them, I'm going to go completely blind because I can feel so much pressure on my oh, eye. Yeah. So I don't know. I have to do some research on that. And then we took Jules. Um, well, you know what he got me for Christmas? He got me like 
eight different sets of silk pajamas. I've never worn silk pajamas in my life. I didn't even know that I would like them. Because she, you know, what what I've been trying to do for guys listening um, is <laughs> what I've been trying to do is because this is what I usually this is what usually happens d- during Christmas and and her birthdays, right? The, the date will come up in two days, and I'll panic, and I'll go, I'll just get her some random thing, you know what I mean? And so what I've been doing lately is months and months in advance. I try to listen to the little clues of things that she says, right? So at one point, maybe three or four months ago, she had said, I don't have any pajamas. I should get some pajamas. <laughs> what I wear to sleep is usually um, really big t-shirt and then just underwear. So I noted that, right? And then I bought her. I don't see. I've never bought pajamas before, so I don't know what the fuck, what brands are good. So I just went for price <laughs> and silk. I think I thought silk. Like, what would Kate Blanchett wear? Mm-hmm. Silk, right? And, you know, and this is probably, I like this, some floral combination, it's floral thing, right? In terms of patterns or whatever. And I also got her some traditional looking ones, right? Yeah. And so that's what I got her. I really like them. It turns out I really like silk pajamas. Silk pajamas? Didn't yeah. know. I always thought I was like a cotton girl. But it turns out, I, I feel like a, a royal. Like, I, like, like freaking Buckingham Palace. Thank you. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break from one of our favorite sponsors. Hims, hims, hims. If you don't know what to do, just do it. <laughs> do it good. <laughs> you guys, um, you know, for me, um, I am a hims for hims fan because um I I am losing my hair and I am partaking in this um exercise. I'm I've called and um I've talked to a professional mm-hmm. and I'm getting my stuff. Um You've heard us talking about hymns before, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're helping guys look their best. And that's what we need. We need to look our best <laughs> for society. And if you haven't, it's time to see what they're all about. 60%, uh, let me tell you the problem. 66% of men start losing their hair by the age of 35. Did you know that, George? And oh, once yeah. you've noticed thinning hair, it can be too late. I have a friend, you know what I mean? You know who he is that has this problem. And it's that hairline slowly starts moving backwards. You, you, you might be too late. So the, the best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it when you still have some. And why do guys turn into weird shit like, you know, at the gas station and stuff like, you know, snake, snake oil? You know, yeah, this you isn't know. snake oil no. pills or gas station counter supplements. Prescription solutions backed by science. Hims was created by a guy who knows some men's health conversations are easier online and in person. No more awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. For Hims connects you to licensed medical professionals online. That's what I did. Which could save you hours. Completely confidential and discreet. Just answer a few questions and a medical professional will review and they will determine what if it's right for you, what's right for you. Yeah. And then they can then prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door. Can you close it out, George, or what? Oh, yeah. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hems will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Go to forhims.com/belly. That is forhims.com/belly. Disclaimer: Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrict- restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember that's forhims.com/belly. And now back to the show. We took Jules to the snow for the first time. Oh, yeah. Where was that? That was in Big Bear. We went the wow. day after the snowstorm. And, and, and I'm going to say this. Um, you know, I grew up in snow, baby. <laughs> in Poway? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, in I, Minnesota. In Minnesota. I was, yeah. you know, from, from two to ten, I lived in Minnesota. Yeah. So, um, but, and I never thought, so Juliana grew up in an, on an island, you know, and they had no snow there. So, you never think that snow, looking at snow, would be like impactful or an amazing thing, right? Because it's just some like snow. I've you know, it's like ocean, the ocean. But I guess a lot of people have never seen the ocean as well. And I've, I I also get astonished when people go like this kid, Rena Ramey, yeah, goes you know when he flew for the first time. It's like you know he just recently flew for the first a time plane, yeah. on a plane. So I guess these things are, you know, new to people and they're and traumatic or sometimes, you know, it's a big experience for Joy- people. Mm-hmm. Joyful, yeah. And so, you know, we decided to go to Big Bear and 
I didn't even think there was snow at this time. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? But we start driving up, and um, we have to put chains on our tire. Is that that he's bad? Like, he's like, we don't need to bring chains. I was like, chains are um, required. Uh, like, you yeah. can't, because it was right after a snow day. So and we put the, like, yeah. but the chains were, putting the chains on. <laughs> well, how was that experience? It was an ordeal. Because I've never done it before. Neither have I. I I've don't done. live in snow, not yeah, used yeah. to it. I don't know what tire it goes on. I don't know how it's put on. And it's like, um, we did it though. You know, here's what happened. So here's Juliana, never seen snow in her life. Don't even know why the fuck we need chains for. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. that's not a concept that she would even understand. Mm-hmm. I've l- literally only seen snow three times in my life. The you? first time when I was 19, one time in Vancouver, mm. and like the third time in Big Bear. Wow. Like, that's, I, I just don't, I've never snowboarded in my life. I've just never really had those opportunities. So I was equally as excited. Really don't know what the fuck chains are for either. I just knew that I needed to buy them. So I bought them, got the tire size, the three numbers, got the correct chains. And I was really banking on him. I was like, Bobby knows he's American. He knows snow. (laughs) Right? I was like, good logic. So uh, you see uh, like a whole row of cars just, you know, stopping to put on their chains. Yeah. And we're, I could start to see that he's starting to like look at how other yeah, people are putting yeah, it just, on. Yeah, I'm just, you know, looking, <laughs> looking at the sun. You know what I mean? And then like, just, I didn't even, I don't even know the concept. But we put them on. I don't even get Not how only you put it, on, put it on it's a wheel. We put it on like fucking Formula One drivers. Yeah, it was we quick. We were so fast. Yeah. It was me, Juliana, and Bobby. Back we it up, back it up. Yeah. Like, back back we, it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah, yeah. we were the first ones out and we of got there. On, and we and they got were, it right. Yeah, and it worked. It was. And like then there were other people who put, you know, it says tire up, tire down, or else you destroy your tires. We could see so many people kind of just not being able to move and then kind of like their tires starting to smoke. And we were just out That's of there. That's funny. And however, <laughs> Did it fall off? we could put chains on really well. It oh turns God. out we don't know how to take them off. They're the worst taken off. But um, so then Jules, you know, when we, snow, when we started seeing snow, to see her face, you know what I mean? To see this uh, winter wonderland, it was um, well worth it. To see somebody go it's beautiful you know mm-hmm. and it's like it, it's it it also you know you can see it through their eyes and then you then you realize you know I me mean, how beautiful it, it really is mm. you know f- like normally if i went up there on my own i'd be just be like because a fuck right but by for her seeing it through her eyes it made me realize how beautiful it was it's weird mm. you know what i mean and then i'm like this is beautiful what a shocking you know what i mean beauty this is you know Sometimes you, I should, you should do that more often, to look at things through some uh, somebody else's eyes, you know. And um, that's what she. And then she went out. We had a great breakfast as well. Mm-hmm. She went out in the snow. They did some slidings. Ooh. And then they used their boogie board. Yeah, I stayed in the car. Oh, that worked. I don't do slidings. <laughs> and then. Um, you know what he told us the day before? Because I was like trying to pack up warm clothes. I was like, Jules, you need like snow pants. You need things. He's like, well, you don't need any of that. He's like, you don't even need a beanie. You don't need gloves. You don't need nothing. And like he basically convinced her that she could just sh- roll up in like thin sweatpants. Well, because I, did she? No, she but, froze her fucking. Yeah, but ass I, off. I was, I never thought you were gonna leave the car. He brought boogie boards. I know, but for me, it's like I'm dressed like this because I'm not leaving the car. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna go out there. He handles the chains. But it was fun. It was fun. And then um, the chain was a nightmare coming to get off. <laughs> coming and, back down. Oh, my God. Him and Jules. It took us like 30 minutes to rip those. We had to go out. underneath the car next to a freeway and just like in the and the chains had entangled into the rotor. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? And Wait, everything. What the fuck? Yeah. And it was like, and imagine that now it's like freezing. Yeah. Ice puddles. Right. Mud. Jules and I are underneath a car yeah. pulling, you know what I mean, metal through, you know what I mean? And it's just <laughs> entangled in there. And then cars whipping by. And then me going screaming, Kalila, look out for me. I don't want to die. You know what I mean? I and, was in, I was blocking him. I'm yeah, blocking yeah, from, cars from, like from cars oh coming. God. It was like, and just ripping. And, and, and I, I fucked up by, because once we finally did it, right, Jules kind of laughed. You know what I mean? Now, that was a crazy experience. And I acted like a bitch. The whole time. He was so angry. I was so oh, angry. Man. He he almost ruined because the I was entire in, in drenched mm-hmm. in rain, wa- like ice water, right? It was like scary. Because my adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> and I was scared. 
you know. And then um, my mood, it affected my mood a little bit. I was a little angry. Wow. But, you know, I told Colin, I said, um, you know, I'm not like my dad and my brother where I stay in rage for an hour or two. And I also don't get violent. OK, mm -hmm. I do when I get in, I do get into rage, but my rages last for about three to five minutes. You know I mean, and I just need to calm down. Right. But I promise you, it'll never go into violence like, like my dad. And it'll it'll never it'll just be that it'll just be I'll just be really, really angry for about three to five minutes. I might say ridiculous things, you know, what I mean, but I will calm myself down. OK, and I apologize. And you did. And I did. And thank you for listening. <laughs> do well, we have a question this we week? We do, though? but did you guys, you guys added a new family member? Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Here. People were wondering. Wait, no, we're not adding. We didn't, we're fostering. Or, we'll ourselves. bring her in. Well, we, we fostered a puppy who had a broken leg and we found her a good home, an amazing home. And now we have a new um, German Shepherd who was the nicest dog I've ever met in my beautiful life. Beautiful dog. The sweetest dog. She's nine months old. Hold on, let's, let's have, let's nine call months? Jules. Jeez. She's, her name is. Um, Cora. I think she's maybe 10, 11 months yeah, old. Yeah, and right? she's um, a sweet, very sweet. Her. How long do you have to hold her for? Uh, oh, today. <laughs> what was that? Jules, can you bring Cora in here? <laughs> yeah. Wear your mask. Okay. Hey, bye. Cora! Cora! You can hey, let Cora. the leash off, Jules. Jules, I heard you didn't put the chains on the tires right. She did. <laughs> go, 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 go to Papa. Cora, come here. Come here, Cora. Cora! Oh, my oh. God. Okay. Hi, sweet Cora. Come here. Come here. Hi. Wow. Cora, say hi. Say hi to the camera. Gosh, what a beautiful, beautiful dog. Beautiful dog. Jeez. She's a sweetheart. Wow. She's so sweet. I think she, I like... She will be available for adoption... Um, in a month. In about a couple weeks because she oh. is um, on... She's on her period right now and yeah. can't spay her until and after Jules she goes Jules' uh, heart is going to break in half. Jules, adopt her. Yeah. <laughs> Julio is not good with, um, with new dogs. Yeah. Oh my god, okay. All right. Isn't she sweet, Gil? Yeah, she's just look, she's trying to find she's my so eczema. Sweet. No, not my eczema. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cora, yeah, come here. Cards, careful of the cords there. Ooh. Cora, come here. She's smart. Come here, Dude, Cora. So friendly. She's the best. Come here, sweet. Hi, dear. Are German shepherds the dogs you can train to bark at intruders? Come here. She doesn't bark at all. She's she like oh, greets barking? she greets the um the mailman. But, uh, but yeah, dogs. If obviously, if there's a real intruder, but she wouldn't. Can, are these gods, uh, these dogs can, are well trained for like commands type of stuff. Right? For commands, yeah. if I told her to sick them, they'd sick. She'd sick them. <laughs> sick them. Hi, baby girl. Okay, Gil. What's the question this week? Yeah, what's the question? Okay, Jules, bring, you bring, can bring, leave bring her here. No, you can leave her here. You can leave her there. Or leave it open at leave, least. Take her here. Take Okay, just take her. There. Hello, guys. I am a 19 year old student from Eastern Europe who has been having sex from the age of 12. Whoa, baby. This affects me negatively as what? I'm constantly looking to have sex with new people. Sex has become unsatisfactory for me too. My parents cheated on each other when I was a child and that broke my heart. This was very traumatic to me. Now I'm not able to build relationships with girls that are interesting to me as I start to neglect them and search for other girls. I see it as a self-defense mechanism to, pre to prevent myself from being cheated on. I want to ask if that's anything you guys have ever struggled with, and if so, could you tell me how to get a hold of traumas like this? Wait, so can you repeat the last part, Gil? What did he say? I'm there? not able to build relationships with girls that are interesting to me as I start to neglect them and search for other girls. I see it as a self-defense mechanism to prevent myself from being cheated on. Because of his Well, you're self-aware of it, right? That's the most important thing. You know, a lot of people, you know, do these actions and they don't even think about it, right? You're completely aware of what the issue is. So that's a good thing. And number two is you also know the answer since you are aware of it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, you know that there is a problem, right? And you know that eventually you're a young guy. Eventually what you'll do is you'll probably get a therapist or someone that will help you, right? And then you will, um, you will change. Or 
if you don't get a therapist and you just decide one day, I'm going to absolutely um, be vulnerable with this person that I like mm -hmm. and I'm going to um, allow myself to feel all the things good and bad and, you know, feel the whole spectrum of emotions with this person that, you know, I have a deep affection for. Mm -hmm. And then y the reward might be so great that you're going to learn that it's so worth your time mm -hmm. to open up like that to somebody and instead of protect that sounds so boring to me <laughs> to continually protect yourself from yeah. being cheated on get cheated on feel all of it it sucks it hurts but the next one won't be as bad and if, if the next one is bad the next one <laughs> might be better it's just it's a small price to pay for feeling love mm -hmm. like for feeling for being love you know what I mean? Love, love, love. For a love story. Mm -hmm. Love story time. This podcast was a little weird, huh? It was like introspective and also um, not really the funniest one we've done. It's the way to kick off 2021. But it's it was still pretty good, I thought. What are your um, wishes for this year? I just need to get out of the funk that I'm in now. I, I can't think outside this week, to be honest with you. I need to get out of the funk that I'm in now. I think this helped. I think getting the shoes helped. I think doing this podcast and talking helped, but I'm still in a funk and very negative. Are you still, it seemed to have directly correlated with you um, being really angry at Santino yesterday. Yeah, what he did was, um, uh, <laughs> to me, it, you know, he, it's one of those things where he knows I'm sensitive about something and he did it anyway. And basically what it was, he, you know, I was not, I was just telling them, we we're talking about casting directors and we we're talking about um, the ones that we like. And I go, this specific one I like a lot. Mm -hmm. I just don't ever book through her thinking that that would be the end of it. And what he does, he calls her. Oh, okay. right in front. Yeah. On, on, and then she picks up and he's like, oh, Bobby says that, you know, he loves you a lot, but you know that, you know, he doesn't book through you. <laughs> oh okay. right and it's like dude no that's not cool because it's like number one i have to be honest with you there were some auditions i've done with her through her that was terrible so it's not her fault yeah i was just you know it's i was doing podcast fodder yeah you know what i mean i wasn't really you know for you to put it in in that light to put a spotlight on it right is embarrassing yeah. and it's and, and, and it's something he, that i'm sensitive about yeah and you know, I could throw him. In, I could put him on blast right now too. Well, that's why you guys are bad friends. And no, I could put her on blast. I could say one thing right now. Don't. Don't. I don't. will. I, I won't. <laughs> I will. I won't. Your I, 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 I'm just it. saying. I could say some things that would destroy him. You know. Well, that's why you have a successful podcast. They, that, that, that's what, that's what that, 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 the human eye only know, right? <laughs> I could put a fucking spotlight on his shit as Relax. well. Check out Relax. bad friends. But you won't. Check out bad friends. I, I'm not you going won't. to. But I'm just saying it's a warning shot. You know, I'll let this one slide. There you go. All right. But you want to fuck around? Let's fuck around. <laughs> All right. You want to get personal? Anyway. We love you. I love you. <laughs> Thanks for li listening. Bye. Bye, guys.